Majestic Ministries. Such a beautiful Tuesday morning. I'm sure some of you are feeling a little bit uh, confused this morning. It's not a Monday. It is a Tuesday. But I hope that you had a great, great, great week in the presence of the Lord, starting all the way from Friday uh, with the Passover, the Good Friday, and of course, Sunday, the Resurrection Sunday. I trust we all had a great time in the presence of the Most High God. So I see many people are quite hungry this morning for the presence and the word of the Lord. But um, with that said, I want us to thank God together. I want us to thank God together this morning for his goodness, for his faithfulness. God has been good to us throughout this whole weekend. It's, it's been really awesome being in the presence of the Lord. And more than anything, you know, the Easter is such a, a high day on, on our Christian calendar. So therefore, this is one of the things that we should be celebrating as children of God, as the body of Christ. Um, with that said, let's just pray together. I would like us to pray together and really thank God for the work of the cross, for the resurrection. Jesus is alive. Therefore, because he lives, we can face tomorrow. So let's just pray together right now in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Let's pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise this morning. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. And we thank you, Father, for your faithfulness in our lives. We thank you for your goodness. The Bible declares that we should taste and see that the Lord is good. And Father, this morning, we have tasted your goodness. We have seen your goodness. We have seen your peace, your joy. Father, your provision in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for the work of the cross and we appropriate that work this morning. That because of the crucifixion, your love was publicly displayed for humanity. Your love for us, mighty God, was displayed. And through your resurrection, we can experience your power. Therefore, Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters that are watching this morning that the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ will be made manifest in every area of their lives. Everything that has been deemed dead in your life, it will resurrect, it will live because Jesus overcame the grave. Jesus overcame death and sin. Therefore, we are alive in Jesus Christ this morning. Father, we bless you and we glorify you and we give you the highest praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody comment, amen, shout amen if you can, wherever you are. I'm so excited. It's really, really been a great week in the presence of the Lord. And uh, this morning's uh, uh, message, or rather we're going to be talking from the subject, um, ever-growing faith, ever-growing faith. And I want to pick up this morning uh, maybe before I do that, I have missed, can I tell you that I missed you? Can, can evangelists tell you this morning? I have missed every single one of you. I couldn't wait to be on set this morning. Now, here's the joke. Um, on Friday, on Good Friday, in the morning service, I, I said to the church that, uh, you know, I'm, we're going to take a break with Pastor Pinky. You know, we just want to recuperate and spend time with the Lord. And then, uh, by the grace of God, um, during the Saturday morning prayer, one person uh, was, was invited by one of our viewers here to, to watch the stream. And this particular lady was so touched by the message on Saturday morning. And uh, I, I audibly heard Holy Spirit say, hey, you cannot uh, 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 rest now. Uh, there will be a time to rest. Please do understand what I'm saying this morning. We will definitely rest. But because of that one person that the Lord touched so much, they needed to hear that message on Saturday morning. And uh, I heard the Holy Ghost say we must continue. So those of you who think evangelist is confused this morning, I am not confused. I know what I said on Friday, that this week we were not going to stream. But thank God that he intervened, he stepped in, and we are live this morning. And we're going to dig into the word of the Lord, ever growing faith, ever growing faith. But um, I feel like calling a few names here this morning. Tubi Kuselo, good morning to you, Maria. Uh, good morning, every single one of you. Cheryl Ann, uh, it was great to see you, Cheryl Ann, Sunday morning uh, together with um, uh, um, our dear brother Thomas that you had invited all the way from Boxbeck. So thank you so much, uh, Cheryl Ann, uh, for your participation. 
praise the Lord. Dean De Ferrari, my dear brother, I hope all is well with you. Uh, bless you and thank you for joining us this morning. Brother Rian Ulis out in Cape Town. Dipulelo Mukwena in Emalasheni. Isabel Mulman, we missed you so, so, so very much too, Isabel. But thank God that you traveled back safely. And uh, we are looking forward to seeing you in the house of the Lord this coming week. Uh, thank you for also tagging those people there, Isabel, together with Pastor Pinky. Unati says, good morning, everyone. Yes, it sure feels good uh, to be back. Amen. I feel the same way. I feel the same way. Unati Connie Barkas, uh, bless you. Uh, thank you for joining this morning. Isabel, the other Isabel. Uh, Isabel the G. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call her Isabel the G. Because I don't know if I'm pronouncing your surname uh, correctly there, Isabel. There's Isabel Mulman and there's Isabel the G. She would know who she is. But thank you for joining this morning. Uh, Anna out in Alberton, good morning to you, uh, as well as many. God bless you guys. I think I've mentioned everybody that's watching this morning. Uh, Hawa Peterson, she says, amen and amen. Dean says, we are blessed. Glad to see you guys are well. Dean, we, it's the grace of the Lord, my brother. We thank God for his grace uh, upon us. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're going to get into the word of the Lord here this morning. And I'm particularly excited about this subject, ever growing faith, because our faith must grow from faith to faith, from glory to glory. So therefore, uh, we should always be working towards uh, our faith growing, our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if I can pick up maybe from the Resurrection Sunday, if I can pick up from the Resurrection Sunday, um, you would realize that when, when Jesus, uh, 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 Jesus came out of the tomb, the Bible says he, he, he rose with all power. He rose with all power. Now, I can only imagine what the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ were going through. You would remember when Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane was, was, was uh, captured by, by the, the, the Pharisees as well as the chief priests. The Bible says that the disciples fled. None of them stayed. They all uh, abandoned him. They all went away from Jesus. And this is the thing. When times are tough, when things look bleak, these are the times when we ought to be, you know, uh, strengthened in our faith. We, you know, what, what we see from the lives of the disciples, it is a valuable lesson. When the rubber meets the road, you know, it shouldn't be easy for us to exit. It shouldn't be easy for us to to abandon what we have with Jesus Christ. More than anything, it's about what he has done for us. So therefore, it should not be easy for us to leave Jesus Christ, to leave our relationship with Jesus Christ. It is imperative that even in the trying times, we stand our ground, but a very valuable lesson in the lives of the disciples that when Jesus was captured, they all fled. But I believe the Lord had a plan for all of this uh, uh, that was happening. They had to flee so that they themselves uh, would have to go through uh, the test of faith. The test of faith. Now, moving on from them abandoning Jesus Christ, uh, we know that when Jesus uh, rose early in the morning, Sunday morning, Jesus rose. And, you know, it is so powerful that the angel uh, of the Lord that was sitting on the, on the big stone that had sealed the tomb, you know, he, he mentioned to the, to, to the ladies that came to, 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 to anoint Jesus' body that morning. He, he said to them that, why are you seeking for the living amongst the dead? And, and he said, you know, the Lord will meet, the, go tell the disciples, the Lord will meet them, will meet them in the front. So it is important, it is imperative, you know, for their faith, for them seeing Jesus Christ. I believe their faith was stirred up. Their faith in Jesus was increased. Hallelujah. Praise God. He died. He died and he said, three days I will raise up this temple. It, I will raise up this temple. So it is so important that, you know, three days later when they saw him, you know, physically, that, that did something for their faith. Amen. So I believe even this morning, the Lord wants to increase our faith. The Lord wants us to grow in our faith. Praise the Lord. And this morning, I want us to pick up from the book of 2 Thessalonians 
If you've got your Bibles, please walk with me through the text this morning from the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 3. Hallelujah. I hope you got your Bibles wherever you're watching from this morning. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3, and it reads in this order. We ought always to give thanks to God for you, as it is right, because your faith is growing abundantly. How is that? That is powerful. We must thank God because your faith is growing abundantly. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. I'm going to read it from another version here this morning. I'm going to read it from another version. We ought always to thank God for you, brothers, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more. That is powerful. That's what we must be doing. We must be working on our faith on a daily basis. Our faith to grow in God. Our faith to grow in our relationship with God. Because the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And one of the things that he comes for is to steal our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But on the contrary, the word of the Lord tells us this morning that we must thank God for you, brothers. We must thank God for you, my beloved sisters, that your faith in God is growing more and more. Your faith in God is growing more abundantly. That means it is expected of us as children of God that we don't always remain where we started with God. If you have, the Bible says, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, that type of faith can move mountains. But God want, wants us to move from that mustard seed type of faith. He wants us to move to even bigger faith. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So therefore, it is expected of us to grow and to mature in the things of God. Don't remain the same. Don't reach the ceiling in your faith in God. Don't reach a, a, a plateau in your faith in God, but always strive to increase your faith in God, especially when you are going through tough times. This is when our faith will be tested. When we are going through tough times, our faith will be tested, but it needs to grow from strength to strength in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, that's something we must thank God for, beloved. That we are steadily, we are steadily growing in faith. Like Jesus' original disciples, that should be our personal goal. Ever growing faith. Now, I also want us to look at another scripture this morning from the book of Luke. If you have your Bibles, let's walk through the text together. Let's walk through the text together. Luke 17 verse 5 Luke 17 verse 5 praise the Lord Luke 17 verse 5 and it reads in this order the apostles said to the Lord increase our faith that that is the sh one of the shortest verses in the Bible listen to it Luke 17 verse 5 the apostles said to the Lord increase our faith Come on, this is beautiful. The disciples of God, the apostles of God, they understood the power of faith. They understood what it is to operate in faith. Therefore, they asked the Lord Jesus, increase our faith. And I wonder if there's somebody watching this morning that is saying the same thing like the apostles. Lord, increase our faith. Whenever we're going through trying times, tribulations, mountains that we are facing, we ought to be saying the same like the apostles. Lord, increase our faith. Our faith in God must always grow. It must always grow. Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9 verse 29. It's always so beautiful to read the word of the Lord. It's, it's always encouraging to read it from the scripture. Because our hope is in the Lord. Our hope is in the word of the Lord. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And we know that every scripture, according to the Bible, it is God breathed. Hallelujah. Praise God for his word this morning. Matthew chapter 9 
verse 29. We are talking about an ever-growing faith. Our faith in God must continually grow. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 29. The Bible says, Then he touched, then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it done to you. Be it done to you according to what? According to your faith. Therefore, if your faith in God, if you are believing something, you know, if you are believing for breakthrough, you are believing for the Lord to do something to open up a door in your life. Hallelujah. It will be done to you and for you according to your faith. We must have faith in Jesus Christ. We must have faith that Jesus still saves today. We must have faith that Jesus still provides today. Jesus still heals today. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So according to your faith, will it be done to you? Whatever you are believing God for, according to your faith, it will be done for you. Now, this is grounds for hope. When you have faith, it means you have hope. Hallelujah. Praise God. You, you, are, you are an optimist. You are optimistic. You are optimistic. And this is how we ought to do things. The Bible, and I, be, I, I remember saying this on, on Sunday morning, that it is blessed. Blessed are those that believe without seeing. Though you are waiting for the breakthrough, though you are waiting for God to do something significant in your life, you must believe, you must have faith that God is working things out for you in the background. Therefore, the Bible declares, for we know that all things will work out for our good, will work out for our good to those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Connie Barker says, hallelujah, times two. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord that he is increasing our faith this morning. Faith is a requirement when you are a child of God. Faith is a prerequisite when you are a child of God. You cannot operate outside of faith when you are a child of God. It is impossible. You got to believe. You got to have faith in God. The Bible says our hope must not be in the arms of flesh, but our hope must be in the Lord. Hallelujah. Those who trust in the Lord, they shall not be put to shame. The Lord will never put you through shame. If you have faith in him, if you trust him, if your hope is in him, you will never be put to shame according to the scripture. Therefore, this morning, continue to believe God. Continue to trust in the Lord. Continue to have faith in this one God. There is only one God, one living God. His name is Jesus Christ. On Sunday, we celebrated the Resurrection Sunday. That means we serve a risen Savior. Our God is not dead. Our God is alive. If he's alive, he can hear your cry. He can hear your prayers. With that said this morning, let your faith in God arise, knowing that when you pray to this God, he will answer your prayer. Therefore, exercise your faith through prayer. God is still sitting on the throne. The Bible says Jesus Christ ascended into heaven. He ascended. Only a living God has the power to come out of the tomb and, 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 and ride on a cloud, on a mist, on vapor, and ascend into heaven. But I love the Bible. And this stirs up a faith in me, a great faith in me. Jesus Christ isn't just sitting in heaven having a great time. But the Bible says Jesus is sitting on the right hand side of the Father. And he is forever mediating for you and I. He is forever praying for you and I. He is forever interceding. Jesus is standing in the gap for us. Listen, I said Sunday morning, if this type of message doesn't light your fire, it means your wood 
is wet. The fact that Jesus is working on our behalf, Jesus is praying for us, that should give you faith enough to believe that God is for you. He is not against you. Therefore, if God is for you, who can be against you? God is faithful. He is praying for you and I. That should stir up your faith this morning. That I serve a God that, is, that prays for me. That is great revelation right there. That is great insight that you pray to a God that prays for you. Praise Jesus for his goodness, for his mercy, for his loving kindness. He is the gracious God. But I want you to know this morning, hold on to Jesus. Hold on to Jesus. There's a song we used to sing. It's called Bambelela. Hold on to Jesus. Hold fast on Jesus. Keep on holding on. Don't give up. Don't retreat. Don't surrender. Hold on to Jesus. Let your faith take you to another level in God. Let your faith take you to a deeper dimension with God. Your faith. Jesus prayed for Peter. He said, Peter, the devil wanted to sift you. The devil wanted to have his way with you. But Peter, I prayed for you that your faith will not fail you. I want to pray for somebody watching this morning that your faith will not fail you. That your faith will save you. Your faith will deliver you. According to your faith, let it be done to you. Whatever you are believing God for, let it be done for you according to your faith. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, our faith levels affect what we receive. Our faith levels affect what we receive. The, the stronger, the higher your faith, that will affect what you receive. Praise the Lord. Then we see how vitally important it is that we grow in our personal cap capacities to believe God for his goodness. It's all up to our faith. In the name of Jesus. But now we're going to look at some biblical principles that will cause our faith to grow. There are some principles in the word of God that will cause our faith to grow. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's pick up from the book of Matthew chapter 21 this morning. Matthew 21. I feel it this morning. I feel it in my sanctified toes. I feel the Holy Spirit in my sanctified toes this morning. Hallelujah. Matthew 21, verse 21. It's always beautiful flipping through the pages of the Bible, getting the word of the Lord, getting direction from the word of God, directly from God. Matthew 21, verse 21. And Jesus answered, truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what has been done to the fig tree, but even you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, it will happen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are principles that will cause our faith to grow. To grow, you can say to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. We, Jesus mentioned one thing. We must not doubt in that same scripture. Matthew 21 verse 21. Do not doubt. Do not doubt. Doubt is from the devil. Doubt is from hell. It's from the pit of hell. Never doubt Jesus Christ. And if you allow doubt and fear to enter your life, that replaces the faith that's in you. Never doubt. Don't doubt God. Hallelujah. Doubt is a great defeater of faith. Jesus said to Peter, listen to the following. Jesus Christ said to Peter, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Doubt defeats faith. Don't open up a door for doubt in your life. Whatever you're going through, whatever you are facing in this life, 
Don't allow doubt to infiltrate your, your, your spiritual senses. Don't allow doubt to flood your spirit. Operate in faith. In everything that you do, operate in faith. I want to encourage somebody this morning. Operate in faith. Faith in Jesus Christ. Faith in Jesus Christ. Doubt and faith cannot coexist. Doubt and faith cannot live together. They cannot coexist. It's like light and darkness. They do not go together. No way. Doubt tears down faith. So let's operate in faith. Think about it. If God has promised us something in his word, the Bible for example, healing, salvation, answered prayer, whatever it is, there's no reason to doubt our faithful God. The Bible says, he who has promised is faithful. Have faith in God. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Your faith in God must stand. Be rooted in your faith in Jesus Christ. Whatever it is that you're facing, I repeat this morning, however long it takes to get to your breakthrough, be rooted in your faith in Jesus Christ. Don't relent. Don't give up. Isabel says, see things that are not. Amen. I so totally agree. Sister Isabel, we need to see things that are not. Things that haven't manifested yet. If God has said it, he, if he has promised you, he is not a man According to the book of Numbers, he is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should change his mind. God never changes his mind. God is not confused. God is not confused. This is so beautiful. <laughs> Our faith in the Lord. Let's look at this in the book of Mark. Mark chapter 6. How beautiful it is always just to flip through the Bible and get the truth of God's word. Let's look at the book of Mark chapter 6 this morning. Mark chapter 6 and verse 6. Hallelujah. And, and it reads in this order. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Jesus was amazed because of the, the lack of faith, their lack of faith. Now, I don't want to amaze Jesus in this wrong way. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be, I don't want to amaze Jesus in this way. I want to amaze Jesus in other ways. I don't want to amaze him because of my lack of faith. That's, that's what the Bible says. Jesus was amazed at their lack of faith. They, they, people had a lack of faith. He clearly expects the normal condition for a Christian to be lots of faith. Jesus was his, his, his jaw dropped to the floor because they had a lack of faith. It is clearly expected of us as children of God to have loads and loads of faith. Praise the Lord. Mark 11, verse 22. The Bible says, have faith in God. What more do we need, beloved? The Lord is speaking to us today concerning faith. Stir up yourself. Get yourself to a place where your faith used to be, even further. And I believe this word is for people that are going through stuff this morning. That's saying my, my, my faith is deteriorating. My, my faith is no longer in where it used to be. My faith in God. But this morning I want to speak Mark eleven twenty two over your life. Have faith in in God. That's what the Bible says. Mark 11 verse 22. Have faith in God. In actual fact, Jesus was saying these words. Jesus Christ himself was saying these words. Have faith in God. Beloved, faith is the choice of our will. We choose to doubt or to have faith in God. But this morning, choose the right thing. Choose Jesus Christ. Choose to have faith in him. Choose to have trust in him. It is something we can determine to do as children of God. Determine to have faith in God. Hallelujah. 
And this morning, I, I want you to say this word after me. I want you to say this, you know, and, and mean it, mean it. Be real with God. It's a very short sentence, but declare it over your life this morning. I will have faith in God. Speak it over your life this morning. I will have faith in God. And I want to ask us this question this morning. Why should this be difficult for us? Why should we have, have a lack of faith in Jesus? You have tasted, according to the book of Psalms, Psalms 94, you have tasted. You have seen the goodness of God. If you have seen him in your past, if you look in the rear view mirror of your life, you have seen the faithfulness of God. Why are you going to doubt God now? Why do you think he will leave you now? Why do you think he doesn't care about you now? The same God that brought you into his kingdom through the shed blood of his son, Jesus Christ, through the cruel death of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. Why would he abandon you now? Jesus has no intention of abandoning you. The Bible calls him Emmanuel. He is God with us. He has no intentions of putting you through shame. He is the same God that takes you from miry clay and puts your feet on solid ground. Jesus Christ, have faith in him. Have faith in him. Sandra says, I will have faith in God. And C.D. Sen says, I will have faith in God. Evangelist uh, Mlonzi says, our favorite evangelist is looking good. Keep it up. African queen, LOL. <laughs> Thank you so much, man of God, evangelist Doomza. The Lord bless you, my dear brother, <laughs> the favorite evangelist. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Nkosazana says, I will have faith in God. We got to believe God, beloved. We got to believe God and have faith in him. We cannot settle for less in the season that we are in now. The devil is on the loose. The devil is on a rampage. We cannot settle for less. We cannot afford to allow doubt to creep in. That is just from the enemy. But our, we must strive for, for, for our faith to grow in the Lord. We take very seriously the command of the Apostle Peter to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I see Pastor Pinky. <laughs> she says, behind every man of God, there is an African queen. <laughs> uh, Pastor Pinky. Praise God. Isabel says, I have the favor of God. Amen. And you got to believe that, Isabel, the favor of God is upon your life. It is upon your life. The Bible speaks of, of the favor of God, that it surrounds us like a shield. The favor of God, it surrounds us like a shield. Receive that word, Isabel, in the name of Jesus. Now, let's look at John 8, John chapter 8, verse 30. The Bible says, even as he spoke, many put their faith in him. You see what I'm talking about? It's the words of Christ. It is the word of the Lord that stirs up a faith in us. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 8, verse 30, even as Jesus spoke, many put their faith in him. And the Lord is speaking to somebody watching today. The, the scriptures that we've been quoting, the scriptures we've been reading this morning, have faith in God. Let Put your faith in the words of Jesus Christ. Howard Peterson says, I want my faith to be strong. I have faith and sit on his word. His word is alive. Hallelujah. I, I agree with you, Howard. Peterson, the Lord bless you. 